last time on our cross-country Peruvian food tour. People who have cancer always hear the doctors recommend them to use the Cui meat. Oro and I ventured up Peru's highlands to get a taste of this anxiety-ridden rodent. That's definitely the brain. Normally, people doesn't eat it. Guess what? We're not normal. He's not normal. Now, we're going even higher, climbing to elevations of over 10,000 feet, all to experience the meat of the gods. The smell combined with the sound, with the visuals, <laughs> it's like an IMAX experience right here. Meet the alpaca. They play an important role in Peru's Andean agriculture. About 82,000 families independently breed and rear alpacas and llamas. Today, We'll meet one such family. This is alpaca liver, ceviche style. I mean, you could say it's cooked. We love. Exactly. I want to understand what it takes to raise these amazing creatures, but I also want to learn how they taste. She's telling me to test it by myself, so. Well, it, it, it passed the sniff test. To find out, we must begin here. We started in Arquipa this morning. Two and a half hours later, I woke up here. Where are we? Chilitia village has been home to a Quechua population for generations. It's nestled in the hypnotic Andes mountain range, 14,000 feet above sea level. I feel the elevation immediately. Just speaking, long sentences get to be winded. Have you ever jogged before without dying? He said, nah, he was born here. Dude, if you went to ocean level and ran a marathon, you would break a world record. Si. <laughs> of course. Right now we're surrounded by alpaca and llamas. Alpacas and llamas are domesticated camelids native to South America. They play a crucial role in the lives of people in Chilatia. And here in Franklin's pen, there are about 30 of each. The first and most obvious question is, how can you tell the difference between a llama and an alpaca? We can make it easy for you. This is a llama. This is an alpaca. Llama? Llama. Llama. Alpaca? Alpaca. alpaca. Ah, it works. As llamas are bigger and stronger than alpacas, they're the go-to for transportation and herd protection. On the other hand, alpacas produce top-notch wool and what the locals refer to as seriously delicious meat. Oro, it's time we get into our mission for the day. We are gonna slaughter an alpaca and eat the whole thing. One alpaca, five different recipes. Do you feel comfortable with using the word slaughter? Yeah, what's like a nice word? What would you use? Put it to rest so we can enjoy the interior meat. And its meat will contribute to our nutritional requirements for the day. And contribute with the cycle of life. Absolutely correct. So which one should we slaughter? Here, the act of slaughtering an alpaca for meat is considered a profound sacrifice. The chosen animal is taken far from the herd and hidden from their gaze. Gracias, Papa. Una vez más en tu presencia, me inclino, agradeciéndose por todas tus bendiciones que nos das. Before ending its life, a prayer is offered to express gratitude to the sustenance this alpaca will provide. Amen. At the moment, they're collecting its blood. The blood is going to be used for a dish, and then they're going to begin the butchering process. Basically, every part of this animal is going to be utilized in some way. This is just the beginning. We have a lot more to see today. As butchering begins, villagers join to help out. How often are you eating alpaca? They sacrifice one every 15 days. First, they collect the wool, prized for its warmth and durability, utilized to create a wide range of products from blankets to luxurious furniture upholstery. Combined, you have 60 animals, so you're slaughtering about half your animals per year for consumption. Then, they extract the organs from within. Yes, but if you think about it, it's not a half. They have between 15 and 20 babies a year, so refill. Like American drinks. No. Thank you. <laughs> in no time, the alpaca meat is broken down into different cuts, ready to be transformed into five different dishes. The two we're starting with require no cooking at all. First course of the day, remember the ceviche we had in Lima? This is alpaca liver ceviche style. We're gonna try that in a moment. But first, I have something even more fun. Would you take a look at this? More liver? No, that's a kidney. A kidney? Well, I would say two kidneys. Oh, yes. So we're not just gonna eat it plain. We're gonna eat it with a little bit of salt. Oh, that helps a lot. That's all we need. This has got to be, I think, the most difficult, challenging thing we'll eat this whole trip. Like that? Like that. Dude, after your face, I don't think I can put it all in. Okay, let me start like...
Oh. Not that bad. I'm lying to myself. I think you're suffering more than me. This is so fun. Mm. It tastes like a medium rare filet mignon. Maybe rare, rare. The salt does help. I think all the minerals in your body get filtered through your kidney, so when you eat it, it tastes like minerals, kind of. The outside is a little bit like the skin of a grape. Actually, if you don't look at it, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> Are those a delicacy? Do people usually fight over the kidneys? See? Hey, but yes, there is always somebody at home. Leave that piece for me, and they come with this all waiting for it. I've just hung out with so many different cultures where that's like a guy thing. But you like it? Uh -huh, you come. Yes, not only this, he consumes everything. Right here, we have our liver ceviche. Okay. This Highland ceviche begins with tomato, onion, mint, and Peruvian pepper. Now balance this harmony of fresh aromatic flavors with the bold, irony raw liver. Season with a pinch of salt and a squeeze of lime, then bravely allow it to overwhelm your taste buds. Cheers. Oh, oh, oh. it's good. There's layers of experience. It starts fresh, but you're like, ooh, onions, lime, a little bit of mint. And then it's like, wait, it's a weird raw, squishy liver texture. And then you're like, ooh, it's like gamey and a lot of minerality inside the liver. So you're tasting all these flavors trying to cover up that liver smell. But the liver's like, no, I'm still here, baby. I have eaten liver before, cooked. And when you eat it cooked, the flavor of the liver is really strong and really bitter. But when you eat it like this, it's more chewy, but very soft. It's crazy because it feels very free. Like you eat it and it moves in your mouth, you know what I mean? It feels more alive. I talk too much about texture and flavor, but I don't really talk about how it moves in my oh. mouth. I should get into that. I hear so many different places around the world where the thing they do that earns them money, they try not to deplete it as a resource so they can have more money. They try not to get high on their own supply. And so it's fascinating being in a place finally where they're like, yeah, we eat the alpacas all the time. Like, why do you think we have them? We sell them too, we shear their wool, but they're actually eating the animal. That's Awesome. Like it's very sustainable. Like it, that's how the way they do it. Listen, I'm excited. Cooking is underway. We have a lot more dishes to try out. Oro, I got a fun task for you next. You get to clean the shit out of the intestines so we can eat the intestines. Okay. Oh, are you accepted? I'm super excited. Can you tell? As active participants of today's forthcoming meal, Oro and I will attempt to give the locals a hand. Oro is helping with the sausage, but first he must help remove the undesirable contents of our sausage casing. I, I, see, I, I seriously have no idea why Sonny made me do this. I came here, I thought it, it was a food review show, not a cleaning poop show. But anyways, hola! All right, folks, check it out. Right now, Oro is having a lot of fun. Oh, I hold this. We're making a very special dish. This dish is called chicharron. I'm like, he's giving me kind of vanity things to do. He's like, I really need help with this hip, I swear. She's telling me to open them up like this. I'm trying to be gentle because I don't want interaction with the feces. Now, the thigh meat. Well, I think you can get that by yourself. <laughs> this guy. Oh my god, look! I'm making a pop tunnel. I press it and the poop travels. Oh. Except now that the meat is cut down into little bitty pieces, it's ready for the marination. We are cutting it and go to the second part. She said that we have the honor to be the first on putting the poop out. It starts with salt, garlic paste. This feels like when I have my first child. Look at that. I like he just puts the whole lime in there. Here we have cumin going in, just a dash. Just a couple dashes. Just three dashes. Give it a little bit of a mix. I would get in there, but there's not really enough room for me. I'm fine just watching. <laughs> and then cut to Oro. Well, it, it, it passed the sniff test. It smells like a adult male after gym. When we finish cleaning, this will become one of our foods for today. We're gonna boil this for a little bit and then fry it. And that is how you get Peruvian chicharron. Franklin boils the meat, making sure it's fully cooked through. In the meantime, we're turning Oro's squeaky clean intestines into Highland sausages. Most sausages around the world are stuffed with some ratio of meat and fat. But here, we have a mixture of blood, corn flour, and salt. Super simple. I'm curious how the corn flour is going to affect the viscosity of the contents of the sausage. I got to say, I'm super proud of Oro. I'm looking at these intestines. They look fresh. They look clean. He really got his hands dirty, like quite literally in this situation. This is complete, ma'am. Well done. Handshake. Yeah. Let's go cook inside. It's raining. 
Now, these blood-filled sausage tubes take a plunge into a boiling pot, together with the alpaca's Andes-proof heart and lungs. Once they boil through, they're hacked into oversized chunks and prepared for indulgence. Just so you know, you're not the only one who was working. Yeah, I'm sure that you were working as hard as me. This is the fruit of my work. To start with, we have the blood sausage. It looks magnificent. Mm. Wow. <laughs> It tastes very similar to liver because of the bitterness. It's a powerful taste, I'll tell you that. It's very intestine-y. Yeah, well, so what I'm used to with blood sausage is mixing in more like meat. But here it's mainly blood. It is like a half-cooked blood paste. The salt brings out the flavor of the iron. And then the intestines have a little bit of gamey fattiness. Yeah. Overall, it's real fun. And it's a little bit challenging and something new. This is actually very good for a soup or in a rice. To distract from the flavor. Yes. It's really bold. I think we should go around the table. Here, we have lungs. Mm. Very soft, squishy. It's interesting because before, the lungs we had were very braised. They're in a gravy. There's so much flavor, and they're cut very small. This is bigger. As you would say, they're spongy. And they move inside your mouth. Mm -hmm. Talk about the movement. What do you like about the lungs? Oh. She said that when they sacrifice an alpaca, these are the three favorite dishes that they like. For the whole community? Yes. But what about the kidneys? I thought the kidneys were the best. And me gusta todo. He said he likes everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love heart from any animal. There's no way I'm not going to like this. That's my favorite so far. Me too. I guess what's most surprising or interesting or noteworthy about the preparation is it's just very straightforward. It's all the very natural flavors enhanced with a little bit of salt. Actually, for me, the heart is the candy of an animal. That's the part that I love the most of any animal because it doesn't matter how the animal tastes. I think the heart always tastes the same. I want to ask about this area where we are right now. This, to me, looks like a more traditional construction. Here I see mud, I see bricks kind of put together. Do people still build homes in this way today? Yeah, it's very effective and they like how it keeps the heat. Has the village grown since you were a child? Sí, ha crecido la población. Villagers of Chilatilla are descendants of the mighty Inca civilization. As a result of being shaped by a multitude of historical events, their culture is an intriguing blend of influences. Yes, but especially the last 15 to 20 years, the population has increase even more. They speak both Quechua, their indigenous language, as well as Spanish. Their religion is syncretic, blending Catholicism and their Andean faith known as Adoration of Mother Earth. As for their lifestyle, are all the families here doing the same job? Is everybody raising llamas and alpacas? Producción de sal. Ah, yes, but at the same time, all of them also produce salt. They have these salt lakes here, so they are part-time working with the llamas and the alpacas, and part-time working in this salt production. Is that the same salt that you season this food with? Sí, la sal también con Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. I think that's my first time where literally everything on the table came from this place. This is delicious, but soon we're going to eat together. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for this. Our grand final meal is still underway with plenty of work to do. We've got a pot of steaming head soup, the mouthwatering chicharron I helped with, and then we have this. Check it out. I'm with Elena. We're making something called concacho. We have a bunch of different body parts from the alpaca. Bits of the spine right here. We have the leg. We have the neck. It looks like a giant turkey neck. Beyond that, we have the most important part, perhaps, the tail. Every part, no matter their degree of importance, gets a good rub down with salt, garlic, and lime. From here, she's going to finish marinating everything. It's going to head into the smoker behind us, and then I'm going to get my first taste of smoked alpaca. I cannot wait. Now the meat is smoked for about three hours. The idea of low and slow here, well, it doesn't exist, as the smoker is a bit more like a blast furnace for meat. But once it's pulled out, you'll discover meat so tender, you can easily cut through it with a hacksaw. Okay, so maybe it's not soft, but let's see how it tastes. Plate up this incredible spread of alpaca dishes with Chilatilla's staple corn, potatoes, and fresh flavor enhancers. Bueno, ante todo, muy buenas tardes, ¿no? Con la visita. First of all, thank you for coming to their humble place and taste a little bit of what they experience every day. I want to say thank you to everyone here because this meal looks delicious and this is truly a once in a lifetime experience. Let's eat. Here we have the. What is this? Ah, the. I don't know. We're making something called concacho. When they smoke it, it dries it out to endure longer. I've got some ribs. Mmm, I love the ribs. 
It's salty and sweet at the same time. Perfect description. It's kind of jerky, but easier to chew. I agree. It's half dried out, half roasted. I mean, it is not low and slow. This is not Texas barbecue. They pair it with the sweet potato, one bite of meat, then one bite of the potato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now combine them. Mmm. Spark, sweet, movement, dance, flow. Architecture. Architecture. <laughs> as long as we're saying random shit. Well, I'm trying to pin down what does this meat taste like. That's interesting because I would think that it would taste like lamb, but for me, it tastes closer to pork, actually. It's this weird combination of like sheep, pork, and chicken together. Yeah, it's crazy. It's quite delicious. I want to jump into this right in front of all of us. We have a soup. But not just any soup. This is alpaca head soup. Start by singeing the alpaca head directly over an open flame. Remove the skin. Then hack it up and get it ready to mingle with some new ingredients. Heat up oil and toss in garlic, onion, cumin, salt, and celery to create a fragrant base for our heady broth. Finally, add the cabeza, corn, and potatoes. With just a bit of simmering, you'll have the perfect soothing antidote to a chilly day in the Andes. Mmm! This is a hearty soup. There's corn, there's potato, and then tons of face meat. When is the last time you had this one? La semana. Just one week ago. This is not like luxury, this is a necessity. They need this. I can tell, it's freezing cold out here. Every moment I think it can't get colder, the wind picks up even more. And this is one of my favorite things so far today because the cooking and seasoning is still straightforward. It's just salt only, but all the body fats have kind of leaked into the broth. That part of the animal breaks together with the starch and the particles, it gives you a really good texture to the soup. These are great particles. I'm so curious about your life here. How close is the closest city? The closest is where we came from, Arequipa. It took us two and a half hours to get here today. Is there electricity that comes out here? They say they don't have electricity or any kind of connection with the city. They have solar panels and that's how they distribute the electricity among their neighbors. So do you have a phone signal out here? Internet? Mail. No mail? So do you love that or do you hate that? Yes, I he says like he likes it. What's good about being so disconnected? I mean, pasteando mis alpacas, mis llamas. He says that he's distracting the paisaje with the alpacas and the llamas. I got carried away with the food. I eat it and then I I speak Spanish. I can't avoid it. For him, it's a blessed because he loves to be just with the alpacas, with the environment, just walking and no connection and not stress. He doesn't worry about anything. Speaking of alpaca, we have one final alpaca dish right here. Oh. The chicharron. After boiling, the alpaca meat gets a light fry. As it sizzles in the clay pot, its hue gradually transforms into a golden brown, the universal indicator of ready-to-eat fried meat. Oh, yeah. Now it's suddenly like on the side of being more beefy. Like beef ribs. Man, the alpaca is like a chameleon. It can be anything. It depends on how you prepare it. I've had bites that were porky, chickeny, and beefy now. Actually, I like it more than I was expecting. That's my favorite thing all day. You say it like this, huh? It's crunchy. It's a little bit dry, but it's a little moist at the same time. It's nice to chew on because it just releases the flavor crystals. It's really nice. It's so impressive to me that out here, it seems like nature and the work you do, you're able to provide so much of what you need just by yourselves with the resources available around you. You have the meat, you've got salt, you got solar electricity. When you do go to the city, what do you have to go to the city for? They go mainly for fruits and vegetables. Because of the harsh weather, fruits and vegetables are the hardest things to get here. And some medicines as well. Also, they have difficulties with water, so they have to extract the water from the well. Sometimes they have to get tools or parts that they might need for their well. Exactly. The city, it's a decent sized city compared to, you know, here, where there's like maybe 300 people. What do you feel when you go into the city? They don't have enough time to actually be aware of the city because they go get what they need and they have to come back. I wish I could spend more time here. It's so fascinating and it's so different from any place I've seen so far in Peru. I'm curious, you're born here, you grew up here. Is this a place you'll retire and spend the rest of your days. For now, he's young, but he also wanna visit other places and amplify his spectrum of knowing the world. Right now, this is home, but in the future, not sure. Sí. Good, I like it. Keep it open-minded, anything's possible. Things are going great now, but it could always change in the future. Men, ladies, thank you so much for everything. Gracias por todo. 
Perdonen por tenerlos aquí con este frío y muchísimas gracias. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. He said nobody has died yet, so. There are other bad outcomes that okay. don't include death. Out of your face, are you look so emo this whole day? Actually, I feel very elevated, especially by poo. I'm in the mountain of poo right now. Not only do they spit saliva, but they actually can regurgitate their stomach acid and spit that at you as well. Regurgitate? Like. Me and you, mano y mano. What's that mean? Man on man? No, hand to hand. Oh. <laughs> Do you like some spleen? La otra esta no. He said he doesn't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the truth comes out. He says it's really yummy. Really jummy. Yeah. You say jummy? It is jummy. Huh? I like jummy food. <laughs> All right. How else would you say? I would say yummy. The same thing you're saying. <laughs> you put a J on it. No, I say, I, I say why? Yummy. Boom, guys, that is the end of this video, and that's how you cook alpaca five different ways, plus raw kidneys. I want to say a huge thank you to Oro, my man right here. Here is his Instagram handle. You can give him a follow and follow his fun adventures in Miami and beyond and around the world, because sometimes he travels, too, uh, probably work-related. I think it's a write-off for him. Otherwise, boom, guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. You know, next time we should eat a yama. You call it a yama, right? Next time we should eat a normal thing, like a chicken or a No, pig. no, no, a llama. Next time we should eat a llama to see if it's different from an alpaca. Ah, I wonder why we didn't do that.